This video is on the rise and fall of DeMarcus Cousins, a story with a lot of peaks, but sadly, some injury-plagued valleys. After committing to Memphis in March of 2009, he decommitted and then went to Kentucky after hearing that then-Memphis coach John Calipari would be moving on to Kentucky to coach. DeMarcus only played one year at Kentucky, but this Kentucky team was nasty. This team consisted of DeMarcus Cousins, obviously, John Wall, Patrick Patterson, Eric Bledsoe, and Daniel Orton. And they just, they just ran through motherfuckers. Five of the Kentucky players entered the draft that year, including Cousins after his first year but that team set the tone for Calipari's tenure at Kentucky moving forward. And this Kentucky team still remains one of the best and most exciting teams to never win an NCAA title. Cousins made the obvious decision to enter the draft and was selected 5th overall by the Sacramento Kings. Boogie had a phenomenal rookie year, starting 62 of a possible 81 games and averaging 14.1 points and 8.6 rebounds per game. Unsurprisingly, he made first team all-rookie that year. As the story goes, as Boogie gradually got better and blossomed into an NBA star, the Kings did not follow suit. Till this day, the Kings haven't made the playoffs since 2006. They sucked before Boogie got there, they sucked while he was there, and they sucked after. And they're going to suck long after. Boogie's time in Sacramento was often clouded by speculation he was wasting his prime in Sacramento, some drama with the front office and coaches, as well as the frequent rumors that the Kings would be sold and relocated to Seattle. The dysfunctional Kings front office did one thing right and one thing only in the draft during the Boogie Cousins era, and that was drafting DeMarcus Cousins. They failed year after year in the lottery, drafting players like Jimmer Fredette, Ben McLemore, and Thomas Robinson. Top collegiate prospects that never cut it in the NBA. To add on to that, Tyreek Evans, who was a top four pick the year before Boogie got there, never reached his much hype potential, and was nothing more than a solid player his whole career. The team acquired Rudy Gay to go along with Isaiah Thomas and Boogie Cousins, which made for a very fun team, but not a team that was ever close to being a contender. Despite all the frustrations in the Kings organization from a lack of winning, Cousins signed a four-year, $62 million deal with the Kings in September of 2013. He was the center of their offense, not only because he played center, but he was actually the centerpiece of their offense. But the Kings coaches and front office definitely didn't do any help in the way he was used and the pieces around him. The fact that Cousins was the center of their offense and the game was slowly moving away from big men and Cousins hadn't even developed a working three point shot until 2016-2017 and the fact that the Kings couldn't pick talent in the lottery if it was staring right at them it meant a lot of very long seasons for the Kings. Cousins was very upset when the Kings front office fired coach Mike Malone on December 15, 2014 who was briefly replaced by Tyrone Corbin and then George Carl, who Cousins frequently didn't get along with until he was eventually fired about a year into his tenure. But make no mistake about it folks, despite the shit show that was and still is the Sacramento Kings, at his peak, Boogie was a consensus top 15, maybe even top 10 player in the NBA. He was an all-star in Sacramento in 2015, 2016, and 2017, all very well deserved. His bruising style in the paint on both offense and defense gained him respect from fans around the world. He was also known for being a very emotional player, sometimes not in the best emotions. Boogie led the NBA in technical fouls per game in 2014, 2015, and 2016, and came in second got the silver in technical fouls per game in 2013, 2017, and 2018. But he was loved off the court in Sacramento, donated large sums of his money to charity, and he was beloved by hardcore Kings fans. Coming into the NBA, Boogie had somewhat of a bad boy reputation, which this asshole, who was apparently a writer or something, tweeted this on January 30th, 2010. There is a 100% chance that DeMarcus Cousins is arrested for something in the next five years. 100%. Write it in stone. Well, Boogie didn't forget that tweet, and five years to the day of the tweet, he responded saying, Today's the day. Let's all show him some love, and then added the guy. Eat shit, buddy. Coincidentally, the day he responded to that tweet was also a day he became a first-time All-Star. Boogie's time in Sacramento marked his arrival as one of the best, if not the best, centers in the league during his peak. If you missed out on Boogie Cousins on the Kings, I genuinely feel bad for you. That being said, this team just could not win. And what was the general reason for the Kings not winning? Well, I think the front office being incompetent year in and year out in the draft and couldn't get players in Isaiah Thomas and Rudy Gay to help out DeMarcus Cousins was one major reason. Also, could a team with a big man who is at best a fringe top 10 player 
actually win games in today's NBA, that probably was a major reason as well. His time there showed that he couldn't do it all on his own. Was Boogie's distractions in the front office of the locker room another reason the Kings didn't win? I would say probably not. I think that was more a result of not winning games to begin with, but it definitely didn't help. Either way, on February 20th, 2017, the boogie ride in Sacktown was over. He was traded to the New Orleans Pelicans for Tyreek Evans, Buddy Heald, Langston Galloway, and a second and first round pick. The Pelicans in 2017-2018 season defied conventional wisdom of a bigger team being able to compete in the NBA. The towers of Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins were killing it. Boogie was averaging about 25.2 points per game and 12.9 rebounds per game, and Anthony Davis were both named for the All-Star team that year, and it looked like the Pelicans could make a run as a dark horse in the playoffs. But sadly, Boogie wasn't able to play in the playoffs, let alone the All-Star game, as he tore his left Achilles on January 26, 2018 against the Rockets and was ruled out for the season. This is where the injury trouble began. This is where the ground zero of DeMarcus Cousins' injury problems began. The Pelicans swept the Blazers in the playoffs without Boogie before falling in five to the Warriors, which was pretty expected. The Warriors were the favorite, but basketball fans felt robbed of Boogie and AD, potentially putting on a show in the playoffs. Like I said, on the Pelicans is where the injury trouble began as he had only missed more than 20 games in just one regular season prior to that. He had a few nagging injuries in his time in Sacramento like all NBA players, especially big men, but nothing at all serious. Perhaps the years of wear and tear from consistently playing bruising and forceful basketball had finally caught up with him. Boogie rehabbed in the 2018 offseason and to the shock of everyone in the basketball world, he signed with the Warriors for $5.3 million on July 6th. 2018. The first reason Boogie signed there was obvious. He wanted to win a title, and adding another all-star to the Warriors was like Thanos getting all the Infinity Stones. They just looked unbeatable. The second is that no team wanted to give DeMarcus Cousins a bigger offer that would entertain him. This was just a sign of the times for DeMarcus Cousins, a big man recovering from a serious injury in a league that is constantly growing smaller. Boogie recovered from injury and returned from the Doves on December 10th, 2018, but on April 16th, 2019, after finally getting a taste of the postseason with the Warriors, he tore his left quadricep in a first round playoff game against the Clippers. He miraculously recovered in about two months and was able to play in the NBA Finals, but something was clearly off as Boogie was a lot more slow and sluggish and he recently admitted that he did play in the NBA Finals hurt. He just wasn't as effective and couldn't implement his game plan the way fans had known him to do in the past. The injury plagued Warriors fell to the Raptors in the NBA Finals. Boogie had failed his goal to win a title which brings us to this past offseason. Again trying to win a title by joining LeBron and Anthony Davis in Los Angeles, Boogie signed a one year $3.5 million contract with the Los Angeles Lake. However, the injury bug wouldn't leave Boogie alone, and in August of that offseason, he tore his ACL while working out for the team. Boogie was set to continue rehabbing for the first place Lakers during the season, and head coach Frank Vogel even hinted at a possible return for Boogie in the playoffs. However, days, literally days after Vogel said that he was waived by the Lakers so that they could sign room for Marquise Morris in their quest for a title. Boogie plans to stay in LA and rehab, and there are rumors that the Lakers could bring him back next year, but that is a long ways away. The injury-driven downfall of the Marcus Cousins is one that happened very quickly, and sitting here in February 2020, it is very hard to believe that in January 2018, he was one of the best bigs in the league. Boogie will likely sign a vet minimum for the next couple years, but it is hard to imagine that a player like Boogie who is notorious for being a forceful and bullying big down low, would be able to replicate something even close to that with his injury history. It's damn near unfathomable. But I suppose that that is the nature of the NBA and all sports in general. The view from the top can be over in an instant, and it seems like it is for DeMarcus Cousins. Three very serious injuries in the last three years will be hard to come back from, on top of the NBA getting smaller and smaller. His numbers and accomplishments are still nothing to scoff at, and anybody that watched him play can tell you that. He was a four-time All-Star, two-time NBA All-Second Team, but perhaps, just perhaps, the bad luck of being drafted by the Kings may have finally caught up with him. Either way, I wish Boogie a speedy recovery and hope he can land on his feet. Alright, that is the video. Please subscribe. Paradise, play us off. Uh,